Hi and welcome to something a little bit different for a Tuesday night. This, as you've probably already guessed, isn't a video about gaming. This is a video about my new 3D printer. This is the DaVinci 1.0A. It does a uh, 200mm cube, build platform, ABS, and I believe it does PLA, but I'm not sure how. So I wanted to show this video just so that you can have a look around it, so that you can see the differences with what you get, how it's packaged. I didn't want to do an unboxing video, there's tons of them around, so I just wanted to show it. But as you can see, it's busy right now, building building something. If the light stays on, it'll be fine. If the printhead gets out of the way, that'll be even better. There you go, you can see, kind of see something there. It's got this cool door. How do you know it's the 1.0A? The door has these magnetic catches. It does have mag yeah there you go and it has metal corners that can see it can i uh can i put you in there and you can see what's happening there you go so it's going pretty crazy building something let me shut this door it's got a cool display on the front let you know how long it's going to take how far it's through and when the light goes out you press this button and it comes back on now there are some pretty weird things about this printer I have to admit, um, the first one, and probably the one that made me laugh the most, is this. Around this side, are we, are we around the side? There, there we go. Around the side, we have this hatch where the USB, the power, and the on-off button is. And there's a, bit, there's a big hole in here, which is pretty cool, so you can get the cables through. But it, it's, it's also a door. I mean... What, what were they thinking? Why would you need a door with a hole in? I don't get that. Weird. The other thing, we come here, as you should notice I've got some red filament there. Um, this printer uses XYZ cartridge filament, which you want to get a little bit for a lot of money. And that there is a kilogram of filament, so they reckon, for not so much money. So I'll make a video later on showing you how I get around the cartridge problem because the cartridge had a chip on it um, and that kind of like what lets it know when it's run out and when it's run out it doesn't print anymore. So we've got a little trick for that. Now I'll just show you the bits that you get. You get a cool USB cable. You get this really awesome brush to uh, clean the print head and you get a scraper. Now somebody referred to this scraper as less than useless. Um, in my opinion, it, it's just, I've just dropped it, it's a scraper, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's for scraping, so if you're trying to use it for something else other than scraping, maybe it is less than useless, but I find it great for scraping. Now, it also comes with this glue, you put a little bit of glue on the build platform there, before it starts printing, and it helps the print stick to the platform for the first layer. Now. This is probably the most impressive part. I'm just going to try and show you as many angles as I can. The packaging that come with this thing, I mean, you've probably seen these parts in other unboxing videos. What you want to see is this. Now, in unboxing videos that I've seen, the print head is held in position by three bits of tape. My 3D printer, when it arrived, the printer head was held in by two bits of tape and the world's biggest tie wrap. Okay, maybe it's not the world's biggest tie wrap, but this is a pretty big tie wrap. It needed a pretty big pair of cutters to cut it. So, I don't know whether the XYZ are starting to up their game a bit with what they're supplying. Let's just see how far this is getting up. Get back on, light. So, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if XYZ is up in their game a bit, but... It's nice to see that they're changing even how they package the thing. A lot of people say this print is huge. And I, I've got to admit, they're right. It's huge. But, you know, if you've got some space, you've got 500 quid, you know, have a go at 3D printing. I did a print earlier on, and I did a time-lapse video, so I'll put that in at the end of this video. If anybody's got any questions or comments about a 3D printer, or this 3D printer in general, or if anybody knows how to bypass the cartridge without actually reflashing really this thing, please let us know, because 
I'd uh, definitely like to know that. Um, but if anybody's got any print, any tips or tricks, or if anybody wants to know anything or say anything about this printer, just leave the comment. Leave leave something in the comments, and I'll see if I can get back to you. Well, that was a bit of a different Tuesday night video, and you never know, I might start blogging about 3D prints now. Don't all cheer, yeah. Okay, well, as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Steve. Thanks for listening. So this is the time lapse video for the, the the part that I printed out earlier. I just wanted to put a, a little few words to it to uh, to kind of share what I've learned from this experience. There's a, a few things. I'll I'll not be here all night, but now that the printer's all packed up and put away, I can kind of reflect on on a a first night's printing. Now, as you can see, this part's printed out with a raft underneath it. That was an option that I selected. That wasn't a good idea. I thought with them being small parts, I'll just print them all on a raft. There, yeah, the raft becomes permanent to the parts, so it's not like support material. You can't just pull it off; it it's permanent. So I will have to print this part again. Um, what it is, it's actually three parts. There's a, a body, a cover, and a cap for a USB type drive. You know the little memory stick things that you plug in the side. Uh, the one that I've got all smashed in, so I thought, oh, I'll just print out a new a new case for it, but. No, it didn't work. Uh, the second problem I discovered with this is um, I was using the the external open spool filament that I got, the red one that I showed earlier. Now, the Da Vinci printer doesn't have any way of setting the temperatures on the extruder or the bed or anything. All those settings seem to come from the, the cartridge chip, and uh, you can't mess with them on the stock firmware. And if you mess with the firmware, then you invalidate your warranty, so... I just kind of plugged the cartridge in, fed the filament from an external source, and it all got a little bit hot and, and melted. Now, I may be able to deal with that by choosing a lower resolution or printing faster, I don't know. Um, or, or maybe even placing the, the components further apart on the print base. I, I'm not sure. So I'll have to take a look at that and, and see how it how it goes in the future. But uh, yeah, it's it's been an interesting an interesting evening with a printer. And as you can see, it's uh, it's coming to an end. It's it's nearly finished the print. Um, the cool down period to open the door, I did chop out this video so you didn't have to sit through that. Um, so thanks for listening.